FDM, or Fused Deposition Modelling, is part of the material extrusion family. It's also known as Fused Filament Fabrication. But why are there two names for this technology? Well, the term FDM was trademarked by Stratasys and then popularised in the maker scene thanks to the RepRap movement. And that's the term that we're going to stick with throughout this video. With FDM, a spool of plastic or filament is forced through a heated print head. Acting like a precise hot glue gun, the print head moves around a build plate, slowly depositing plastic, one layer at a time. The part is built up by those layers until it's entirely complete. The average build size for an FDM printer is generally around 250 millimeters cubed. Because of the nature of the technology though, they can go up to as large as one meter cubed, or even bigger. There are three main characteristics of FDM technology. Layers, support, and infill. Let's look at layers first. The layers of an FDM print have a large impact on the surface quality of the part. As the part is built up one layer at a time, we want all the layers to bond to one another so the final part is solid and cohesive. To do this, when an FDM printer prints a part, it actually presses the new layers down onto the old layers, slightly remelting them and bonding them together. The result of this is that the new layers being printed are printed as an oval rather than a circle, and we see valleys and peaks down the side of an FDM part. Layers also play an important role in the strength of FDM parts. Because the parts are printed one layer at a time, they're inherently anisotropic. What this means is they're much stronger in one direction compared to another. Looking at this diagram, we can see that depending on the print orientation and the direction the load's been applied, we get very different performance from the two parts. This is a problem with most 3D printing technologies, but is something that really needs to be considered when doing FDM printing. Now, it's also important to talk about layer height. The layer height of a part can really define its surface finish. Thicker layers mean your part can be printed faster, but you will have a rougher surface, whereas thinner layers may take longer to produce the part, but the surface finish will be much smoother. The second key feature of FDM printing is support material. One limitation of additive manufacturing is that you cannot just print on thin air. You need something to build upon. This is where support material comes in. Support material is a structure that's built under overhanging features to support them from below. An important rule to remember when considering support for FDM is the ABC rule, or more appropriately, the YHT rule. If we consider the letter Y, the overhanging features don't require support material as they're greater than 45 degrees. There's just enough material from the previous layer to print the new layer upon. Let's now consider the letter H, the second letter in our YHT rule. Intuitively, you'd think the letter H would require support. However, here, FDM utilizes something called bridging. For the horizontal section of the H, if this gap is less than 20 millimeters, support's not required, and we still get a coherent print. The final letter of our YHT rule is the letter T. Here, we don't have bridging like the letter H, and unlike the letter Y, we have clear horizontal overhangs that require support material. If we didn't have support material here, this is what our print would end up looking like. The upside to support material is that it allows us to produce very complex geometries. The downside to support material is that it needs to be removed after the print is complete, and the areas that it's in contact with the part are generally affected and have an undesirable surface finish. These always require some post-processing, and we're going to talk about this later in the video. Some FDM printers utilize two print heads, which mean that they can do multi-material printing. A big advantage of this when considering support is that we can print support in dissolvable material. What this means is, as soon as the print is complete, we can put the print into a soluble solution, and the support material will dissolve away, leaving a nice cohesive surface finish over the entire part. The final characteristic of FDM printing is infill. Printing a solid part can be time consuming and expensive. To save on costs and to get our parts even faster, we print an internal structure known as infill inside all FDM prints. When we talk about infill, we talk about the infill percentage. When we're discussing percentage, it can really have a big impact on the final performance of your part. If you want strong parts, we increase the infill percentage. If strength's not required, you can decrease the infill percentage to make your parts cost effectively and quickly. This series is based on the 3D printing handbook. 
Every week, we'll give away 10 copies of the book to subscribers to this YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe now. FDM is generally considered a low-cost method of 3D printing. This makes it great for quick, cheap prototyping. There are also high-end engineering plastics available. As a rule of thumb, the higher the performance that you require from an FDM material, the more difficult it is to print. The most commonly used materials when printing with FDM are PLA and ABS. Sometimes it's difficult to understand the differences between these two materials. We've included a link below where you can find more about them in much more detail. More recently, ASA, a material developed specifically for FDM 3D printing, has become very popular. ASA has similar properties to ABS, however it's much easier to print with. One of the advantages of FDM thermoplastics is that they can be easily post-processed. It doesn't matter if you're looking to improve the performance or function of your part with a process like electroplating or its overall appearance with a process like polishing or painting. Recently, there have been some cool new developments that are driving the FDM industry forwards. These include plastic parts as strong as aluminium, integrated electronics and metal FDM printing. To achieve plastic parts as strong as aluminium, one FDM printer uses two print heads. The first print head lays down a base material, while the second print head follows behind and lays down a continuous strand of carbon fibre, reinforcing the part. This composite approach results in parts that are as strong as aluminium, ready to be used straight off the print bed with no post-processing required. So what about integrated electronics? Although experimental, some FDM printers are able to deposit metal filled pastes along with the thermoplastic polymer, and this allows for the production of integrated circuits, batteries and conductors. The other big development in the FDM industry is metal printing. Metal FDM printing uses a filament impregnated with metal powder. The parts are produced the normal way, however they are taken and sintered, causing the plastic to melt and burn off and the metal remaining to fuse and bond together. The result is a robust metal part with the strength of metal and all the benefits of FDM printing. When looking at any 3D printing technology, it's important to look at the key benefits and limitations to make sure that you're selecting the right technology for your application. So let's do a quick recap. What have we learned in this episode? FDM stands for Fused Deposition Modeling and is part of the Material Extrusion category. The main characteristics of FDM are layers, support, and infill. It's important to understand how these characteristics affect the final performance of your part. And FDM is a very versatile technology with a large range of materials available. If you're looking for 3D printed parts that have a smooth surface, high accuracy, or can withstand a significant load, you'll need to look into other 3D printing technologies. In the next episode of What is 3D Printing, we're going to focus on VAT polymerization, in particular SLA and DLP.